But I decided I wanted to try and make a uh, short video about how I do some of my breaks. Actually, I'll probably do several short videos about how I do these breaks. Um, in this first one, I want to just go through how I might do a drum break using Glitch 2 by Illformed. This is my typical way I do this. This also Illformed, um, or sorry, Glitch 2 by Illformed. Is, is a paid plugin. So I, I plan on doing another one to show kind of how I do some of the breaks sometimes when either I'm not using this or like you didn't have Glitch 2, or you might do it for free. Um, but first round, this is the quickest version, is this paid plugin I use. Uh, and I don't remember exactly what I paid for it. It was on sale one time when I decided I wouldn't have got it. Through happenstance that it happened to also be on sale. Uh, and then, uh, I think it was like $25, I don't know, it was something ridiculously cheap. Maybe it was 50 I feel like it was 25 at the time though, and I don't think I've ever seen it get down that low since, but I'm not like stalking and refreshing their page, so I don't know. Um, but this is Glitch 2, and so what I'll do is, um, first actually usually what I like to do is just kind of render the, the drum part that I plan on breaking down. And this doesn't want to work. There we go. Like I might just take this section here. Let's just do a short section for this video. I might take something like that and then I'll just render it however it was being used before in my track up till that point. Uh, I'm going to do a lot of processing to these in the long run when I'm doing a break anyway, but I just want to show you how I generate my break samples. So on this one, um, oh, get rid of it of course i know it's done here i'm silly so then i'll drop glitch here on um this channel that i'm working on this track i'm working on with these drum beats so right now it just sounds like oh sorry right now it just sounds like this and uh i'll throw glitch on it sometimes we can just do whatever but usually so glitch always loads with random presets coming in so they're not like presets in that you can go back to and find them again later unless you save them, but it'll just generate a bunch of random uh, blocks in here on this interface. And so with drums, what I usually like to do is just shuffle them and then maybe add a couple effects. So I'll go to shuffler here and then uh, I like to have them try and keep them on beat. Uh, one of the problems is that uh, there's sort of this like middle space here where you get too short, usually in like the 1 16th to maybe 1 32nd range where the cuts are so short that sometimes you get these weird clicks and stuff throughout the sample that comes out and it's actually under. So I don't know if you can hear that, but there are a number of clicks and what it is is it's the way that the shuffler cuts their sample times. If it has just a little bit of tail, but no other sounds going through there, all you catch is that tail jumping in and then trailing off real quick. Um, so anyway, that can be an issue, but if you go faster, then you get a lot of quick clicks, which makes fun sounds, or um, you just make them longer. So it kind of just depends on what you want to do. Um, and then I'll just run this so that a little bit more repeat and shuffle in here. And it's cool because it has some reverse too. We can go in there, bring this up a little. Nice when it gets, there you go. When it hits on like a kick or a full snare beat or something, uh, it can be nice. But I want to just do a full on shuffle here. And the more shuffle and repeat you have in there, the same thing with reverse. The more samples it's going to start throwing through there and then the less um, you get fewer of them so i'll do that and sometimes just render it so i might just uh, duplicate this and then i'll freeze it and i uh, will flatten it so now i have this whole take here this whole clip of all that being shuffled so you can see how some of it's the same or similar but then a bit of it's different so like if you ran these things together um you just get more Although this isn't as exciting as it is sometimes. Part of the problem is because I was already on eights. So it's just, it's essentially either just filling or leaving some blanks right here where we have these cuts. 
So if that works for me, great. I'll use that and just have a relatively clean break coming through and I'll cut out all the parts I don't like. Like right here, I'd probably cut out this business here with the clicks in there, maybe like, you know, trim this back a bit and then go through and I'll usually individually pull all these things. If I have doubles, like, like say here and here, I might just cut that out entirely and not use it uh, since it's going to be picked up somewhere else already. Um, Cause a lot of times I'll just layer these and then cut out wherever there's extra sound going on and it's either like too messy or noisy or there's too much gain in any lower stuff. However I need to do it, I'll just start peeling away the stuff that's too much. So the other thing I like to do with glitch is um, my, my favorite things are this lo-fi effect and um, also the distortion effect. And I use the, the modulator a bit, but usually that's because I like the way that it plays with uh, the lo-fi. Um, it kind of just depends. So if we're listening just to the lo-fi here, although it's not working. Oh, some of the thing. I don't usually like to bring the bit left depth too far down. And you just find like a nice, there you go. Um, and then I really, really like that glitch has these um, FM attack and release parameters that I can work with. So you get, So you can get some of those like wows and woos in there with the lo-fi. So then what I'll do is I'll do a similar thing with here with, oops, distort with modulation. I was wanting to solo this. And let's get more on here just so you can hear more of it. Get some more in, I guess. And um, you can also modulate the frequency uh, at the, the frequency, you can modulate the frequency that it's being modulated at. You can modulate the modulation. But anyway. I'll show you what I mean. So then when you get those together, then, you know, maybe you get, well, and then just distort, then get rid of the distortions. You can just hear with the shuffle and then the modulator and the lo-fi. So especially combined, like you get more of that variation as it's, um, moving through that envelope and, and changing the frequency of modulation in here and then changing the frequency of sampling. Uh, and then same thing here with uh, distortion, we can throw in bits where we like it. Now they don't have those modulation parameters on the distortion thing in Glitch 2, but I like the four different types of, um, of distortion that it adds. And then you got a tone knob and then you can adjust your wet dry. then you can get something like that. Now, the one thing that's kind of funky about the way this works in Ableton, and I don't know if it may be a system to system or if it's DAW to DAW, but in Ableton, usually if I just grab somewhere in the middle of the song and listen to it with glitch on there, this timer that he uses to sync will be at a different place than when I render it. So when I render it, it's an account from the beginning, but when I do actually, here's the thing I need to know, it's kind of funky. Oh, it starts right at the beginning on this one. It doesn't always start at the beginning. This time, just coincidentally, the way my divisions worked, it did. Um, so sometimes I'll have to listen to this when I freeze it, just to make sure it's getting what I was expecting. Because if it's radically different, then what I can do is just record it through resampling. But and so there you go. I've just generated both these clips now of all these different samples and I can go in and cut and paste as I like. You can make it messier if you want to. I like to kind of keep mine fairly neat um, just because it saves my, um, my mind when I'm going through and doing all the cuts and edits. But, um, you know, some folks like to just kind of see where it gets and then they'll just move their clips to where they want to have them, which I do from time to time. It's just not how I usually like to do an entire clip. Um, and so like even on the shuffler here, you can go to free and you can be like, you know, the times be off a little bit. And, um, 
you see you don't have to be stuck just on two or three, I think it'll do. Oh yeah, maybe it still will only work that many beats. So you can get pretty wild stuff in here. And then another thing I'll do once in a while, usually not on drums, but occasionally, is I'll just start asking for, you know, just random crap from it. Like, what do you got glitch to? Show me. Give me something else. Okay, show me more. And so you can get some fun sounds out of that too, that way. But that's basically it. From here, what I do when I get into my break. So I just wanted to show you how I generate these things. So then I'll go through and I'll just start cutting all this stuff up. I'll decide what I like and what I don't like. So I might go through here and be like, okay, I don't, maybe I don't like that one. And there's some of these that had the modulation on them without any of the other effects triggered. And I don't like those ones as much. And then I'll go through and cut them up all individually, process them how I want, EQ them, add any effects, especially stuff like delay and, and reverb if I want it uh, in there. And then all of a sudden I'll have I'll have a mix. There you go. That's how I generate my, my drum glitch that breaks. And I'll follow up with some more videos on how I do it with glitch two on my um, like melodies. And then I'll do another pair of videos probably showing how I do it. They'll be longer because they're more involved, but how I do it without using Glitch 2. If I either just want to mix up, mix it up, or I want something super specific, or like I said, if you uh, don't have access to Glitch 2, but you want to use either free plugins or plugins that are available in your DAW, we'll go through and do that in a later video. So thanks for showing up. Don't forget to like and subscribe, obligatory statements, all that stuff. Check out amateurcrassinator.com. Have a good one.